everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's one of our last days of Golden Graduates Weekend 2021. Um, so if you're joining us for the first time, my name is Ashley Meissner, and I work on the Affinity Engagement Team here in the Office of Alumni Relations. Um, so just before we begin today's presentation, I do want to go over um, just some Zoom housekeeping reminders. Uh, so the first one is please just make sure that your computer or phone is muted throughout the presentation just to ensure a quality experience for all. Um, excuse me. And then if you do have questions, um, we will be doing a question and answer um, portion of the presentation. Um, so you can just put your questions in that chat box function in your toolbar and at the end of the presentation, we'll read through all of your questions. Um, and if you do need automated transcription services, they are available for this event. You can either hide or show those subtitles or the live transcription panel via that CC live button in the bottom of your toolbar. And then finally, we are recording this session for those who were unable to attend. So please just be aware that by logging on, you do consent to the recording. Um, so now I would like to introduce um, Jordana Makanyi, Head of the Archives and Special Collections, and Molly Brown, Reference and Outreach Archivist, who are going to tell us all about the Northeastern Archives. So with that, I will turn it over to you. Welcome everybody. Um, we are so thrilled to have you here and to, um, and to have people who are interested in the kinds of things that can be done with the archives. Um, as you might know, we are in the basement of the Snell Library. Um, uh, some of you may or may not have seen that in person um, now that it was switched from Dodge to Snell. Um, and we are uh, have an office, which Molly will show you a couple of pictures of um, in, in that basement. Um, what you don't see is all of the storage areas um, that we have to be able to, to, to maintain and um, keep, our, keep our stuff safe, essentially, um, in our fire suppression, fire suppressed systems and climate controlled systems. So essentially what our job is, is to collect and make available the history of Northeastern University um, and also the history of social justice organizations and activists in Boston. And um, we've been open for uh, just over 25 years. So we're a little bit new on the scene at Northeastern compared to a lot of other um, groups on campus, but we feel like our, um, our shop is a great nexus of experiential education. Um, our students come and, <clears throat> and rifle through old materials in boxes, something that you can't really do via computer. And for digital natives, this is a really cool experience for them. Um, and we have a whole bunch of history that relates to um, Northeastern's growth and change over time, um, and also Boston history in this really interesting um, um, mostly modern, um, um, modern-ish uh, kind of way. So largely from the 1940s to the present, um, things like uh, records related to the Big Dig, um, records related to development in, East Bo uh, in Boston um, and other kinds of social justice organizations and individuals. Um, so I'm sure we're gonna have time for questions afterwards, but that's us in a nutshell. And Molly is going to talk a lot more about what are the kinds of activities can be done in, in the Northeastern University archives. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much, Jordana, for our kind of opening call. Um, and it's a pleasure to gather virtually with everybody here. So I'm Molly Brown and I'm the Reference and Outreach Archivist. And what that means is that it is my great pleasure to um, help make available and help teach with and share the many records of Northeastern that tell the story of Northeastern's history from its founding to its continued development and growth, as well as the records of Boston, Boston activists, Boston neighborhoods. Um, and of course, those stories between Northeastern and Boston also intertwine, which is, is part of the fun of these collections. Um, so thank you all for gathering today. Uh, what we're going to do today is just take a little trip into the archives and talk about the types of materials that help tell Northeastern story. So no, you don't have to close your Zoom um, and walk over to the archives, we'll take you there. Um, so as Jordana said, we're in the basement of Snell Library. 
So if you were to enter the front of Snell, you would go downstairs and you would make a sharp left turn and you would walk into what we call the reading room. And this is a place where alumni, students, Greater Boston community members, Boston Public School high schoolers, among many others come to visit, learn about the history of Northeastern and the history of Boston. Um, I don't know if any of you still have Northeastern news copies or copies of your yearbook, The Cauldron. Maybe you kept onto a course catalog because you had to transfer some courses, um, but you can see some of those records in the back of the room here. We are currently closed to the public just for COVID-19 precautions as well as for construction. But if you are ever at Snow Library in a time when we are open, we would be delighted to have you come down here. So now you are old pros. You've already been to the basement of the archives. So welcome. You are now officiated researchers. And just before we start talking about the records of Northeastern um, and what we hold and the types of records about your time that might be represented in our collections, Let's take a look at what those collections look like. So Jordana was talking about all those boxes of stuff that we have in the back. Um, and this is what that storage looks like. So you might have been able to have visited. Um, if you come to the archives, I'd be happy to give you a tour of this in another time. Um, but this is what the keeping and preserving of records look like. So when you hear about archives and special collections, you might think old things, you might think National Treasure and Nicolas Cage, but you can also think about the papers and the photographs that create a history. And sometimes they look very similar to what is this photo on the right here, um, which is a box of folders of different types of papers. Um, these are from the Freedom House collection, which is a Boston collection, um, but you can also see what types of Northeastern records there are which I won't stop, I'll stop teasing you all. Um, and we can actually get to the sort of records that we have in the archives. Um, what I'm going to be highlighting are records that are actually available to you now in the comfort of your home. So if you were to click out of the Zoom meeting, you could find the very same records that I'm sharing with you on your own computer. Or you could email me and I could help you find those records and I could send them to you. And we'll talk about how that will work a little later. But one of our greatest resources for telling the history of Northeastern and getting to know campus is the Northeastern University Photography Department collection. These photographs, which include photographs from jet photography, help tell the story of campus life, campus growth, um, and, and all of the things you all might have gotten up to during your time at Northeastern. Um, so here we have a, a football game. You can see in the back in the center photo, a WNEU banner. Um, we have some photos of people hanging out on the quad. Um, you can imagine during your time at Northeastern, you might have enjoyed a time by a tree in the quad. Um, there might be a photo of you in our collections of that very time. You just never know. Um, so we're going to get into just the types of things that um, the Northeastern Photography Department photographed and maybe some of the stories of your time that you might be able to find. Um, and at the end of this, if you come across anything that I've shared that you have more information on or that you would like to share an anecdote about, I would be delighted to hear it. So just keep that in mind later on if I show something and you think, gosh, I know more about that than Molly. That is absolutely true. And I look forward to hearing about it later on if you can share that with me. So, you know, something that Northeastern is pretty well known for is its growth, right? Um, so the campus of Northeastern has, has grown a great deal from its start with the YMCA being an evening institute. Um, so here we have some photos from the growth of Northeastern that might have happened during your time there. Um, so to the left, we have President Knowles laying the cornerstone of Stetson Hall, the women's dormitory. Um, this was the laying the cornerstone of Stetson Hall West, although later on Stetson Hall East would be established. Um, and while this is just a couple photos of one building, we could have done an entire presentation on um, all of the, the dirt scooping and cornerstone laying that occurred on campus um, in the campus's transition from one of parking lots and, and commuters um, to one of many buildings for, for learning and gathering. Um, so if anybody's interested in more buildings, we can definitely take a look at that after um, I share just a few more slides with you. We also have a lot of photographs that document the range of cooperative education at Northeastern. So on the left, we have a student that was a pharmacy lab co-op. Um, that is her and her son um, in a 1969 pharmacy lab. 
Um, we have a, a business co-op. You can see that he's working at the teller there. Then we have a few um, co-ops at the stock exchange. Um, and this is from both 1969 and 1966. Um, if you're interested in the history of cooperative education, you can also see photographs dating back to early Northeastern, you know, the early 1900s. The um, photographs of engineering co-ops are quite interesting to take a look at. Um, so if you want to take a look at those, we can share that later. But what I'm trying to do is kind of titillate um, your mind and have you think about what other things you thought up to at Northeastern that you might like to see records from. We also have photos of campus events. Um, these photos are things that we like to share with current Northeastern students. Um, students at Northeastern are really interested in how everybody gathered and what they did on campus, how students build community together. Um, and they're often surprised to see what y'all got up to. Um, I think that seeing this log sign contest really inspired some to, to have some more ambitious events on campus. And then we have this photo of the winter carnival and um, you know, everyone has their memory of, of posing and being near a Husky statue. You can see that here. Um, there are, are many other Husky related photos that again could probably be its own separate um, presentation. Um, and then another series of events that um, students at Northeastern are very interested in is the mayor of Huntington Avenue events. And while these two photographs do not encompass the entirety of the shenanigans that got up to on campus and the various parades and creative names, um, you can see just a sample. So we have one of the King Bud who was um, successful in his mayor of Huntington Avenue campaign, as well as some of the performances um, that also were a part of the the big events at, at the time on campus. Um, recently, the mayor of Huntington Avenue was renewed at Northeastern. Um, students are interested in the contest again. However, it doesn't quite have the same panache and fanfare that you can see throughout the years, um, especially during the 60s and 70s. So for you golden graduates, I'm sure you have a, a few stories to tell, maybe a few things to enlighten us too. We also have records of student organizations on campus, and this is both documented in the Northeastern Department of Photography as well as in our student records. So, you know, here we have a couple photos of WNEU, which was the radio station that preceded WRBB. Um, but we also have a whole collection for WRBB, which includes the early records of WNEU. We also have a whole collection from the Student Activities Office that shows the, the types of clubs and student organizations that were developed that maybe some of you spearheaded the development of, um, as well as the, the hard work that you all put together to create events on campus, to put forward gatherings. Um, and that might just be submitting a budget form or it could be putting flyers all over campus, but those sort of records are there too. Um, so while I'm showing you photographs because it's, it's easier to share and perceive through Zoom, you also have you know, boxes of paper that show the hard work of students to make the Northeastern campus what they wanted it to look like. And sometimes that paper can be really exciting to take a look at. And it's something that students are really interested in. Um, we also have you know, photographs and documentation of the many connections outside the Northeastern campus that was made. Um, here we have some incredible photographs from when Coretta Scott King came to address um, seniors at Northeastern. Um, so for the 1971 class, um, she was the, the, the keynote commencement address. So you can see here the front of the Northeastern news on the left. Um, and you can see a photograph of her speaking as well as her receiving an honorary degree. Um, if you're interested in other sort of historic commencement events, um, speakers, we do have many records that document that, as well as the records of the commencement committee, um, which we can all think of and thank right now who are having to pretty creatively think about how to celebrate graduating students. Um, there, you can see that labor through all sorts of years and time. Um, and I think students are very interested in who Northeastern brought to celebrate and who Northeastern brought to, to speak and impart wisdom to students as they were passing on um, in this great ceremony that you all remember and are being celebrated at too as Golden Graduates. We also have records of student involvement that goes beyond groups and campus life. We have records of student activism. Um, so, you know, through the late 1960s and early 1970s, we have student anti-war protests. Um, we also have records of student anti-apartheid protests. 
Um, and we also have records from students that were organizing, organizing to make Northeastern's campus a better, safer, and more representative place. So here, you know, this is going beyond the Northeastern University photography collection, but we do have records of when in 1968, 13 demands were submitted to President Knowles to provide more resources and more representation for Black students. Um, and this led to the creation of the John D. O'Brien African American Institute. This led to the creation of an African American Studies Department, um, among other things. And these were all hallmarks that probably occurred during the time that you were attending Northeastern. Um, so we have, you know, records of these big movements of students working together, um, but also records of, of moments like a co-op um, when you're in the pharmacy lab by yourself and working. Um, so this is just to really show you the range of student life and in your lives that are documented in our collection and being preserved so that other people can continue telling your story and the campus of Northeastern story that you experienced. Um, and I do want to share, there are other ways to take a look at our records too, beyond the university photography collection. So on the left, you can see this is an issue of the 1971 cauldron. Um, we have all of the cauldrons that we hold in the archives digitized and available to you. Um, so if you wanted to take a look at that yearbook um, and you just cannot find it, um, you might put it in the wrong closet, we have a digitized version available for you that you can take a look at. Um, similarly, we have the Black student newspaper, the Onyx Informer, available, which does a great job of documenting what's going on in Northeastern's campus at the time outside of the yearbook. But here are two really incredible resources that kind of help you read the student voice, and maybe perhaps your voices are represented in these um, at the time. Um, we do also have the Northeastern News, but that is not currently digitized and available remotely. But if there's an article that you're looking for, you can always email us and we can find it for you. Um, so I know I just took you on kind of a quick tour through the possibilities of archives, the possibilities of the records that, that your life and your work and your time as a Husky at Northeastern um, and as an alumni, perhaps even at Northeastern or an employee at Northeastern might be recorded here. Um, and there are many ways that you can access these records. So the first one that I'll just give you a sneak preview of is that we have over 64,000 dig digitized records that both, both come from our special collections that document Boston's history as well as Northeastern's history. And you are welcome to access those records from home. Um, after this presentation, I will be sending all of the links and the slides that I'm sharing today with Ashley, and she can pass these along to you. So anything that you see here and hear from me, you don't have to remember, they will be emailed to you again. Um, but I thought I would just show you, you know, what searching in our records might look like. So this is our digital repository, um, and this is where you can find any of the, the photographs, the records that you might be interested in finding that have been scanned already. Um, so something that might be kind of interesting is if we went to the university archives and we took a look at commencement records. You can see my, my typing occur here. And let's say you're interested in photographs of commencement. Once the search completes um, on my internet that's just trying its best, we're gonna limit our search to photographs and see what all we can find. Um, so sometimes when you're searching, you might want specific things that help you tell a story. And oftentimes when you're trying to remember what happened on campus, it's images. So if you go to limit your search and type, you can look for all the images that document commencement. And boy, are there a lot. You can see that we have over 466 um, images from commencements over the years. Um, and perhaps you know a specific year that you would like to see commencement photos from. If you go to limit your search again and go to year, you can find the year that you're looking for. Um, and so this is just a brief tutorial if you are interested in, in you know, taking a look at years past at Northeastern, if you have things you're interested in seeing, um, you are welcome to do this on your own. Um, so let's say you might be interested in seeing 1969's commencement. You can see that we have three photos here. Um, we have one of um, Boston leader and icon Melnia Cass receiving an honorary degree. You can see more honorary degree recipients. Um, so you can see that the photos again from this commencement are honorary degree recipients. Others document the whole room, right? That whole big group of people, all of the graduates. 
um, and others um, document the speakers like Coretta Scott King. So that's a little taste of what it looks like to explore records. So that's one way that you can really engage with and enjoy Northeastern history on your own. And then another way is if you visit our Northeastern history website. Um, and what this website provides is not only access to a timeline of Northeastern history, to the very same photographs that I shared with you, but also to exhibits. And while it may be, feel a little funny to see exhibits that document the time on campus that you were there, um, of course, your memories are not just a museum exhibit or a digital exhibit. It also is kind of fun to see how past Northeastern public history students, past people that have worked in the archives, continue to tell the story of Northeastern. So for any of you that have been involved in Bouvet College, you might be interested in taking a look at a proud past and exhibit about the history of Boston Bouvet from 1913 to 1981. Perhaps you really love learning about the start of Northeastern and its connections with the YMCA. Then you could take a look at our first president and fearless leader, Frank Palmer Spear, who started it all. Perhaps you're interested in how greater politics and national politics interacted with Northeastern. You might wanna take a look at Senator Kennedy and student aid at Northeastern. Or maybe you wanna know and engage with the history of how the African-American Studies Department was founded, how the African-American Institute was founded, how black students came up at Northeastern and created their own space for themselves. Here is a great exhibit that can tell you more about that. We also have an exhibit that will give you a taste of what our Boston collections tell you um, about the social justice history of Northeastern. Um, and we also have a history of the ROTC and military involvement on Northeastern's campus, um, which certainly was a big part of its history as well. So these are all things, you know, I, I showed you photographs from a broad story of different topics and involvements at Northeastern. Um, but you can see exhibits here that kind of give you a really nice entry point um, into understanding the history and just kind of walk you through time. Um, and what's fun to think about is that oftentimes Northeastern history students or Northeastern public history students were involved in the creation of these exhibits. So not only are you engaging with the history of Northeastern, but also active scholarship and experiential learning that students are getting up to now. Um, so what I love about this exhibit is that we think of Frank Palmer Spear as our first president, but also he was so much more. There are very fun um, records and documentation of his life beyond academics. Perhaps you didn't know that he was a little bit of a singer, like to coin his own tunes. Um, we have some records here that help tell that story. Um, he was a playwright. Uh, he has a lot of creative writings in his papers at Northeastern. Um, you can see here a, a little booklet called Who Swears and Why? Um, and you can imagine that if that folder comes out, that's a pretty exciting folder for students to get a hand, their hands on. What a question to have answered with the writing of Northeastern's first president. Um, perhaps you're interested in learning about all of the other institutes under Spear that were founded. So sure, we have the Evening Institute, but what about the Automotive School? Um, while this wasn't exactly starting during your, during your time as Golden Graduates, I, I think learning about all of the different institutions that propelled Northeastern to be what it was while you attended to be what it is today is really interesting. So, you know, speaking of jingles, um, you might want to take a look at the Automobili B, which was the jingle and song for the Northeastern Automotive School. You can learn how Northeastern advertised itself to students early on. So there are all of these little bits of amazing history, and it's these sort of records that are very similar to the records that document your time as well, right? They come from academic departments, they come from leaders on campus, they come from people that fundraised and developed for campus, that help build the buildings that exist on campus. And that's how you tell a great story. You tell a story about the people at Northeastern that led it and that cared for it. Um, and so that's what you all have been up to as Golden Graduates, which has been very fun for me to kind of share that information with you. Now, I did mention that we do have the yearbooks available, and you can access that either through the Northeastern History site or through this link that will be shared with you later. Um, you can see that there are 92 yearbooks available, and one thing that's really great is that they are text searchable. So perhaps you don't have time to page through 200 pages within a yearbook. Um, yearbook committees from year to year did have a fun time, you know, writing their own narrative and writing some great articles in a yearbook, which made them considerably longer than your average yearbook. Um, you might wanna learn about Stetson Hall and see where it shows up. 
And so you can search in this search box right here. And what it's going to do is search through all the yearbooks starting from 1921 um, and going through, you know, the, the later years. So you can see that we have 58 yearbooks that mention Stetson if you're interested in your old dormitory and want to see how it was represented in the yearbooks. There are also in these um, yearbooks are clips from Northeastern news articles that talked about big events on campus. So this is also a really great year resource to kind of collect everything that was going on in a year. Um, it's really helpful for me to tell the story of Northeastern too. So again, um, I appreciate you kind of coming with me for the, the fast tour of the, the images and events and times at Northeastern that are documented. But I really want to take it to y'all and have your questions kind of drive the rest of this half an hour that we have left together. Um, what we can do, I'll stop sharing my screen for now and take a look at what's happening in the chat. Um, and we can talk about any questions that you have about Northeastern history and where you might find it. And I will also add that the last way that you can get to Northeastern history is emailing us. Um, so if you go to archives at northeastern.edu, um, if you have questions that come up right now that um, you don't really want to share with the class or that you want to ask later, um, feel free to contact us here, um, and it would be my delight to respond to you. Probably you will be hearing from me. I am the woman behind the email, but you might also hear from some of our other part-time employees that work with us. Um, and just in terms of access, I am on here two days a week um, scanning requests for people that are interested in Northeastern records, as well as the records of Boston. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and we can go to the chat. Yeah. So are there any questions? Yeah, thanks, Ashley. Oh, so it looks like there's a few already. Um, I do think um, you showed a picture of the Winter Carnival Court, and it looks like a handful of our attendees actually recognized the gentleman in that photo. Oh, um, amazing. Everett, I'm going to maybe mispronounce his last name. Everett Now. Everett New. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then another question, uh, is there a transcript or recording of Coretta Scott King's um, commencement speech? That is a really great question, um, and actually one that we've gotten quite a lot. Unfortunately, there is not a transcript of her speech. Um, one of her requests when she agreed to be a commencement speaker is that she wouldn't have to submit a transcript ahead of time. Um, so it, it's one of those historic moments where the person speaking just requested that it got to exist in the moment, which for those present is wonderful for us curious about what happened and what was said is hard. Um, so unfortunately we don't have great records of that, but that's a wonderful question. Yeah, good to know. <clears throat> um, and so do you know whatever happened to the engineering technology program um, and how was it related to Wentworth Institute? Do you know? Ooh, so that, that is a question that I think I would have to do a little more homework on. Um, but I will say that we do have a lot of great records that, that document the engineering and technology program and the various schools and institutes that um, kind of crossed over into it. Um, I will say that some of the, the sort of Wentworth engineering technology history also crosses over with MIT, and they hold some of that history in their own records as well. So that's kind of where we get into the, um, there are many archives in Boston and we all intersect with each other. <laughs> so, so that's a little part of it too. Um, and do you have any non-print materials in the collection, um, banners, trophies, things like that? So we do have a few trophies, probably the majority of the, the non-print material are kind of like objects that we have um, include shovels. So for any of you that have participated, um, I see that we have Gene Rapucci here in the ceremonial opening of a building, scooping the dirt with the shovel. We have a few ceremonial shovels there. Um, we do have some awards. We also have some um, like sweaters from Northeastern and we have, um, we have like a field hockey stick uh, from the Bouvet School, um, but, but not too many trophies. We do have, um, you know, plaques here and there, but really for our archives and the storage we have, we, we try to limit it to audiovisual materials, paper materials, um, as well as, as other kind of more um, compact materials. We don't have a, a lot of room for big objects anymore. Makes sense. <laughs> um, and then uh, there was just a follow up question, I believe, to about the engineering technology program. Do you have information about the Lowell Institute um, at Northeastern as well in the collection? Yeah, we do. So not all of those records are digitized, but we do have information from the Lowell Institute, which includes kind of some yearbooks and student information, um, as well as the, the academic departments and leaders at the school at the time. 
Um, so yes, we do. And if you are interested in learning about specific things about the Lowell Institute, um, feel free to email us. Um, we do have some great records. They just aren't all, all digitized right now. Makes sense. Um, and then is there a collection of maps, um, map views of the Fenway area, including Northeastern, um, that show from the same perspective, like the buildings that they were added and raised over time to kind of have maybe like a time lapse of the area? So we have a lot of aerial photos um, that Northeastern phot photographers took. So if you were to go into that same um, database that I showed you, if we were to search for aerials, um, there are some pretty good ones, even starting um, in the 1920s, just like aerial maps um, or, or kind of plans of the area. Um, and then if you are interested too in other um, types of maps and, and growth of the area, I would recommend taking a look at the, the Leventhal Center. Um, at the Boston Public Library. Uh, while they aren't, you know, a Northeastern institution, they have all of these darn maps that document the Fenway area incredibly. So I can also direct you to those too. Yeah, that would be great. I'm sure those would be fascinating to look at, especially I know we've talked about how much Northeastern campus has changed um, since the 60s <laughs> and 70s. So always good to see. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of good questions. Um, so do you collect personal papers from alumni? So we do not. Um, and so Jordana, as our, our head of special collections, can speak more to kind of how we tell the, the story of Northeastern and what, what types of records we take. So far, um, what, we, what we've been focusing on is the records of the university, clubs, um, et cetera, et cetera. We have not um, delved into alumni um, for the most part, but that's a wonderful question. Great, thank you. Um, and then do you know if, where the, or do you have the donor plaque from the Egan building? Whoa. <laughs> it's a very um, specific question. So. I know. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not certain that we do. We do have photographs of the plaques. So that's probably the most comprehensive documentation that we have from it. Um, we might have an etching from the plaque. There are a couple of those in our collections, but um, I'll have to take a look and see if we have anything related to the Egan plaque. Um, what we do have, if anyone's interested, and this is, you know, just an anecdote inspired by that question, we have the cornerstone of some buildings in our collection. So if any of you recall the Boston Opera House, um, we do have the cornerstone from that building there. Wonderful. Um, let's see. I also I put the, a link to the, um, the Boston Public Library's Leventhal Map Center's um, viewer, which is, it's a, it's an amazing resource. It doesn't go up to the 1970s, um, but it's a wonderful, um, you can get a bird's eye view into what the city of Boston looked like um, over many, many, many years. Um, it's, it's a wonderful resource. Great, thank you. And I'll make sure to include that in a follow-up email too, so that you, if you don't click on it now, you'll have it in your, in your email. Um, let's see. Wendell, I started as a pharmacy major. Is pharmacy still offered as a career major? Um, I can answer that for you. <laughs> yes, it is still a major at Northeastern. Um, and then here we go. Do you have any photos or documentations of the early years of the Burlington campus? Um, they were there from 50, uh, 65 to 66. So we do have some records from the Burlington campus. Um, let me take a look and see. As, as far as um, the years go, we have a lot from I think we do have some photographs from 1966. So those are in our, our photographic negatives in our jet photography negatives collection. Yeah, and I will say we, I still go to the Burlington campus occasionally and that has also changed a lot since the <laughs> yeah. 60s and 70s. There's a lot of new buildings. So if you get over there, yeah. it's really cool to check out. Well, and we do have some aerial photos from that as well. Oh, so great. if you're interested in following up on that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> to change subjects, what time are the graduation ceremonies tomorrow? 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. <laughs> and those will be live streamed. Um, so is there anything specifically um, that you have related to NU's first nursing uh, BSN program, which graduated in 1971? I know there were some nursing programs before that, but this was the, the first um, baccalaureate class, I believe. You know, I, I bet we do. We do have a lot of records from the nursing programs at Northeastern, um, especially there are a lot of great photographs from, from the different co-ops um, and participation there. Something that our, our records are really good at documenting is the, the beginning of programs on campus, right? Because if you think about all of the paper it takes to start a program and everything that would be shuffled from a provost to a president to a professor, um, that is all documented well in our records. So I think we would have a lot of administrative records 
Um, and we might as we might also have like course information and kind of the beginning of um, the the planning of the curricula for that program as well. Great, thank you. Um, and then this is more anecdotal from Marguerite. Um, she has a photo of a plaque that was in front of what what used to be called the United Drug Company building, saying that 18 inches of this sidewalk are the property of United Drug Company. Um, but it was it was paved over several years ago. Um, she would like to know if maybe perhaps you would like that photo <laughs> and I'll, I'll make sure that you two can you guys can connect and, and see what um yeah might become of that yeah i think that would be really interesting to see so I, I would love to connect marguerite um and also i will say that we do have a united drug company products collection um and in it i believe there is something related to that plaque so you would be building on existing records already there um, which would be pretty cool so um, great. Yeah, and Jordana might have a little more um, enlightenment on that. Um, because those buildings are still there, um, it's, it's interesting that every once in a while, um, some artifact or something gets shaken out of, out, out of that building because it's just been occupied for North, from Northeastern for so long. Um, yeah. And yeah, and the, the United Drunk Company's products uh, collection is actually really interesting because it, you know, it just sort of shows the the time and what kind of products yeah, you definitely would not find in a pharmacy today. <laughs> That's a fun collection. Yeah. Um, may I ask what building, what, what is the current building now on campus that, that the United Drunk Company was in? It, go ahead. I don't know. It's, it's on <laughs> Leon Street. Um, so that, that is the current building. So I wouldn't be able to, to yeah. give the, the name. It's, um, you know, of course, because of COVID, I have, I've forgotten have all of the names of the so buildings, long. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all, it's all of the buildings on Leon street. And then there's a giant smokestack in between in the back of that building. Um, and that's, and that's also part of the United Drug Company. Okay. I think. It's Meserve Hall. Yes. I was going to say it's the Meserve Lake <laughs> yeah. Homes. That's right. Yep. Yeah. That, that conglomerate. <laughs> yes. Conglomerate. I like that. Um, great. So let's see. Um, is the Warren Center in Ashland still owned by Northeastern and used as a retreat center? You know, I do not have the answer to that question. Um, so some of these I may have to research on my own and follow up. Um, and, and I will say that as far as the records of um, Northeastern's other campuses that are outside of Boston, the, those stories are also kind of yet to come to us. Um, the majority of our records document the, the Boston Northeastern University campus. That makes sense. And I do believe that the Warren Center is no longer owned by Northeastern. I believe it was sold. Um... Let's see. So do you have any new ROTC photos, um, especially on the Greenleaf building, presence on campus, um, or any of the Wednesday drills on the Fenway? You know, we do have some ROTC photographs. Um, I can't speak specifically to the Greenleaf building, but that may, may very well be, but definitely the presence on campus and kind of the campus adjustments. Um, we do have photographs of drills. I'm not sure if it's exactly the, the Fenway one that is coming to mind, um, but I will drop in the chat just the link to that, that exhibit um, about the Northeastern um, military presence on campus, but that's a great question. Thank you. Let's see what else. Um... Hopefully without, okay, yeah. So any other uh, questions? We have some anecdotes coming through. Yes, the English department, among others, was on the fourth floor of the uh, <laughs> that building. Um, yeah, any other questions? Orchestra records, um, do you have orchestra photos from that time? That's a good question. Um, you know, probably the orchestra records from Northeastern and, and from other presences on campus are not as rich. Um, we might have a few photographs. It would be my suspicion, maybe. Yeah, great. Yeah, mostly mostly in campus photography, in the campus photography collection, which is, you know, a lot of it is in drawers. But, you know, if you're interested, email archives at northeastern.edu and we can look for, for orchestra photos from, from your time period. Great, thank you. All right. What other questions or anecdotes do we have from the group? Would you mention the archive collection of the Boston Globe as well as the Big Dig? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so one of so we we work as as Molly mentioned, we collect in Boston history, um, and in recent years we've been uh, branching out to a few very significant collections. 
um, where we acquired the uh, Boston Globe's photo work um, and its clippings file, which is just a massive, thank you, Jean, for mentioning this, um, is a massive undertaking that, we've, um, that we, we acquired it um, several years ago. So it's uh, pretty much all of the photographs um, from a certain time period um, that the Globe printed. Um, and and also clippings based at that uh, that were actually physically clipped out of the out of um, the newspapers and filed under subject. Um, so it's a really it's a really wonderful and also very heavily used collections um, by our journalism students and pretty much anybody interested in doing some in depth research on what was going on in Boston. We also um, acquired the Boston Phoenix's records, so bound volumes and their photo morgue of all sorts of different band photos and um, and you know and as Molly mentioned, we also um, have a few other newspapers including the Gay Community News, the East Boston Community News, um, and the Fenway News are our three other papers that we've, we've been, uh, we've collected over some time. And Marguerite says, all of them, I worked on those Globes files and co-op and I did the clipping. <laughs> that's a one that's wonderful to, to, to hear from somebody who is actually there doing the scissors um, because all of that, all of that is represented in the archives. Um, and you know, hearing stories from the librarian as we were, um, Lisa to it as as we were collecting it, were so interesting to to think about how so many Northeastern students were were the ones doing the clipping. So that's a thank you for sharing that, Marguerite. And yes, we do have all of them. <laughs> Um, how did Northeastern, uh, you know, obtain the, the Globe archives and the Phoenix and all of that? What was the process, you know, kind of, how did, how did Northeastern get picked, I guess? <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's an industry secret. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, <laughs> the Globe, um, both the Globe and the Phoenix um, had um, shopped around their collections to several different institutions. And I think, um, and, you know, I think people were actually, in the end, um, I think that uh, Stephen Mindich, who gave us, who was the owner of the Phoenix, um, he got really excited about Northeastern because of the journalism school that, and, that we have, and also the Phoenix as a, as a backdrop to all of our community collections. Um, so, you know, we have a lot of arts material and a lot of, you know, Boston politics material and, and that's a lot of the content of the Phoenix. So ultimately, I think that that's what Stephen, who unfortunately has passed away a few years ago, had decided. And as for the Globe, I think um, I think that um, they were excited about having the Northeastern students come. They also wanted, um, as opposed to you know thinking about uh, uh, um, out of town universities. Um, they were excited about having it right in the center heart of Boston, having that collection there. And also, I think um, they had heard from peers that, um, that, that we were doing a good job in terms of providing access to materials and, and looking at the, you know, um, moving forward, mo forward movement um, in terms of digitization and providing access to materials. So, um, and I think, you know, a little bit of um, trust was probably a, a part of that. So yeah, thanks for that question. Yeah, wonderful. Let's see. Um, so Cliff asked the question, when did Boston After Dark change to Phoenix? And Molly answered that it changed in 1972 um, and also dropped that uh, link into the chat box. Uh, another question, does the archive have personal papers of any famous graduates? Is that the type of in, um, materials that you would have collected? In general, in general, we don't um, have alumni materials. Um, so I, you know, that's not to say that we won't ever. <laughs> but I think right, right, right at the moment, we're we're mostly sticking to the records of the university itself. I apologize, Molly answered that question in the chat as well. So that's good to know. Let's see, um, is journalism separate from English? Journalism was just a sequence in the English department in the 1965 to 70 time period. Um, um, I think they're all under the College of Social Sciences and Humanities. Yeah, I um, believe, I wanna say it was like 1990 when it, I think in the 90s when it may be split. 
Yeah. And, and that would make sense with kind of our records. Um, you know, the, the journalism department would show up um, especially distinct when you would talk about like newspaper involvement. Um, there are a lot of journalism students that were involved in the Cauldron Yearbook as well as Northeastern News. Um, but, but it was linked with the English department for, for a good long time. But Ashley, our, our resident also Northeastern historian had a great answer. Thank you. I only know that from an event that we recently did, so. <laughs> Great. Any other questions, anecdotes? Um, we have a small enough group if you want to unmute your phone and ask or share. I think that's fine. I can what? ask you, I can share an anecdote. Sure. When we had the NU at Noon program tour through the archives, I asked a question about a, a book. Uh, that a friend of mine had found in her attic. Her grandmother had been the recording secretary for a women's organization at a church in Roxbury back in the 1930s. And she said, what do I do with it? So I had the book. I went to the archives, asked at, the, at that session, uh, do you want it? And they said, well, we don't specialize in that kind of thing, perhaps UMass Boston would like it, but why don't you see if the church still exists? So I did. And I got a hold of a gentleman who is uh, the church secretary now. And he said, we'd love it. Well, the church has changed and evolved as the neighborhood has. It's now a mostly black church as before it was a, an all white church. Uh, they've changed the way they, they celebrate their uh, different uh, liturgies, but they were just delighted to have it. They said, this is a piece of our history that's been missing. We're delighted to get it. And he God blessed me up and down the, the yin yang, but, but uh, I was just thrilled to be able to get it to him and uh, to supply that. And you folks, the archivists at Northeastern provided the information that I needed to be able to make this happen. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate it. And I think it, it you're really helping drive home the fact that, you know, archives are really personal and they, they are celebrations. And, and sometimes our archives aren't the right place for something. But what we love to do and love to help with is finding the right place. Um, so exactly. just because we aren't able to take something does not mean that it is not important, not impactful, and won't get um, blessings all around when someone has it in the right place, right? Um, right. So, so we are always here, and you can email us at that same email. If you have something that, that feels big, feels important, feels like it deserves to be seen, we can try and help you find the right person to make sure that it is cared for. Um, so Marguerite, thanks for, for walking that walk um, and showing us how to do that. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's a great story. Um, yeah, any other uh, questions, stories, anecdotes? Hi, let me, uh, let me just say a couple of words. Um, I'm, I'm Ed Galvin, class of 70, um, also a retired archivist. Uh, I was at Syracuse University from 95 until I retired in 2015 and uh, never have had the chance to, to see Northeasterns before. Uh, so much of what you're doing is what I did for, for 20 years. And uh, I just applaud you um, for what you're doing to keep the history of, of Northeastern alive. Uh, I know it's a lot of work. Believe me, I know it's a lot of work. And uh, there's a lot of components to, to it all, but uh, congratulations on this. And, and it's great to be able to, to see what you're doing. So thanks. Thank you so much for mentioning that. And, um, and I, I'm interested to hear how your Northeastern career headed in that direction, because um, one of the other famous um, Northeastern graduates is David Ferriero, who is um, oh, the yeah, National right. Archivist is is a Northeastern grad, and he got stuck. He got caught. Um, he got the archives bug by doing a co-op. Um, so I'm interested how how you how your career path ended up. Ed. Well, uh, quickly, um, I was a journalism um, student, 
but an English grad because journalism doesn't show on my degree anywhere. <clears throat> um, and after being in the army, I didn't know what I was doing. I saw an ad in our local paper in Winchester, Mass. Uh, and the historical society said, we're looking for somebody to help move some historical books in the attic of the library and vacuum the dust off them. Uh, and I said, yeah, I'm not doing anything else. So I got in there and realized, wait a minute, I could organize this pretty well. Kind of went from there. I got into archives, came back to Northeastern when I didn't have enough credentials uh, to go any further as, a, as an archivist and got my master's in American history. But actually it was, I was the first graduate in a program called Historical Agencies and Administration, which didn't last very long. I only know of a couple of other people that, that, uh, um, that were in that actual program, but gave me a smattering of, of all of the aspects of working in, in history and then just kept moving from place to place and ended up at Syracuse. Hmm. So, yeah, that's it wasn't a, planned. <laughs> that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful story. Um, Northeastern does have a public history department, which um, we, oh, really? um, the library employs a lot of public history students for uh, both our work with the Boston Research Center. Um, but it, they're just, I think it's probably very similar to, to what you, what you read, learned. Um, and, and they're just wonderful to work with. They just, they're just lovely. So Ed, let me, let me say something. I was delighted to hear your story. I'm a graduate in 1960. I've had the pleasure of working with Molly and Giordano on a number of occasions. Uh, be sure when you next visit the archives to ask them to show you my beer mugs from when I was at Northeastern because they do collect objects at least they collected my beer mugs. <laughs> ah, okay. It's always important to throw in a little ephemera here and there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We tell our stories in many ways, and sometimes it's the mugs we cheers with. So that's very good. <laughs> I've got two quick questions for you. One is, does Northeastern still have a library science program? They did briefly. And the second one is if I wanted to find a particular article, say in the uh, Boston Globe archive collection that you have, um, would I have to come in to look it up? Or can I say, can you find an article and not give you an approximate date and the subject in that and then have you send me a scanned copy of it or a link to it? Because I know the Globe stuff isn't digitized. Yeah, so I think if you email us, we can definitely help you. Um, the, the thing about the globe with the clippings is that many of them are stored off site. So if you want um, uh. a specific article of the clippings, but I can also help you as an alum um, get access to the library's databases too. Um, so that's something that we can work with because the while the globe isn't digitized, um, the Northeastern University Library has access to the amazing Boston Globe Library database. Um, so that means that you can search all of these records um, and we can find that article. Um, what we can also find too, you know, if there's a photograph with it, um, we can take a look in our photograph collection and try to find kind of a, a bigger, better version than that newsprint photograph, which is, is the fun thing. And then you can see the photographer's notes on the back too. That's cool. Yeah. I know that the, the Globe had acquired the files of the Boston Post when it went under. And so you may also have some of those photos and uh, articles in there that were in the Globe clipping files. Yeah, I bet we have the articles um, that would be in the clippings files. Um, with the Globe photographs, many of the sort of early photographs that we have um, were kind of filed out. Um, people were very organized with how those globe photos were maintained. So some of the earlier photos of the globe library aren't accessible in that way. But, uh. you know, as I'm sure, you know, for the co-ops in the room, um, you remember the globe library will always surprise you with what you'll find too, right? This like you open a file and it can be more than you would have ever hoped or expected. <laughs> um, so yeah, if anybody has questions um, about that, 
feel free to email us and we'll take a look. I will note that, you know, for any of the, the burning questions that are coming into your mind right now, we do have a backlog of reference requests just from when we had to be closed over the summer. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind that it may take a little longer than normal to get back to you, but, but we really care and we want to get back to you. <laughs> As We're you can tell by shovels, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going along with Marguerite's uh, question here, and I'll beat the drum again on this one. Um, having sat through uh, was unfortunately very hard to hear speech from Coretta King. Um, would it be interesting to know what the Globe reported the next day on yeah. any remarks that she made uh, or an article that talked about her, uh, someone of that note having spoken at the commencement? You know, sometimes they summarize those comments and it would have been interesting or would be interesting to know what was said about that speech. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you'll find those records both in, you know, big publications like the Globe. Um, the library also has access to the Bay State banner. So I bet that there is probably some interesting documentation of that, that speech there. Um, and also the, the Onyx probably has an article of that there. So we, we certainly can follow up and kind of, you know, echo locate some quotes from that speech and the sort of journalistic um, documentation of it that occurred afterwards. When I was... Uh... I was at Northeastern in the late 60s, and I worked for Jean Lupucci. I used to record uh, uh, Dr. Knowles' speeches. <laughs> well, thank you for your labor. <laughs> we have um, great speech recordings and, and video recordings in the archives, and I know that, you know, there, there are many Northeastern students and co-ops behind it. Um, so it's, you know, think that you, your work is being preserved probably. So that's pretty cool. Thanks for sharing that. Oh, Cliff, I wanted to, that's uh, beautiful. <laughs> Cliff Smith. I wanted comment. to make a, I, I wanted to just make a comment um, and uh, thank you for, for um, including the archive, archive pieces you have about the creation of the African American Institute. Uh, when I came to Northeastern um, in 1966, like my other golden colleagues here, many of them, um, I got deeply involved with um, some the, the, the politics and uh, civil rights and, and uh, justice on campus. And it was Northeastern that really helped launch my career um, in education. I became a, a teacher um, and it was those experiences on campus and helping to found the um, African-American Association and the African-American Institute that um, kind of inspired and motivated me um, to um, go into history and eventually uh, make that a career. And um, I have been in the archives uh, and look at some of the collection you have on the um, the institute and on Black Student Life at that time, and and uh, some and other efforts on campus around um, the war, civil rights, et cetera. And um, I, I appreciate that that you all are, are including that because that is at Northeastern history and it's also Black history at the same time. Yeah, and a really key part. Um, and also, I mean, the African American Institute is a big part of Boston history. I mean, John D. O'Brien and, and Jean McGuire working together, changing the Boston School Committee. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing that because you're absolutely right. Um, when we talk about Northeastern and we talk about what students did on campus, that's a big part of it. Um, so thank you. And, and the Institute celebrated 50 years, uh, two, uh, two years ago in uh, 18 and 19, um, which was a great celebration and brought back some of the folks that were uh, instrumental in its in its development over the years. So, and it's still very vibrant uh, today on campus. Actually. Yes, it is. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, any other kind of last minute um, questions or comments? We're almost at one o'clock, so I do wanna be respectful of everyone's time. Um, but I just want to, again, thank Molly and Jordana for presenting today and answering all our questions. Um, this was absolutely wonderful. Um, and yeah, I definitely recommend visiting the archives. Um, I've been there before. It's fascinating. And um, we've done a couple alumni trips there. So hopefully we can do one again soon once we're able to, to get back um, back to a little bit normal. And, you know, your backlog is uh, worked out. But um, yeah, I really appreciate you both being here today.
Thank you so much. You yeah. all raised such interesting questions and really it's just, it's, it's, it's our pleasure. It's, it's been a delight. Yeah. And the best part of my day is um, meeting people and, and taking them through the archives. So please come, come get a tour. It's great to see some of you again, and I hope to see some of you soon.